Uh, I'm Giriraj Verma from WebTech Technologies. Uh, I say my thanks to all the eminent viewers, panelists, and to the respectable participants of the railway organizations, railway boards, zonal head offices, state metro head offices, honorable railway ministers, and MAWA. Thanks to all for listening to me. I will present you on the technology part on green HVAC systems in railway systems. So today I will be uh, speaking about WebTech uh, position and the strategy on HVAC uh, and refrigeration air conditioning. Then I will be talking about technology part, basically three points I wanted to mention it today, which is air quality, focused on uh, safe and uh, healthy air delivery. Then refrigerants, which is focused on uh, green air conditioning. Then fresh air controls, which is focused on energy saving. So let's take the first part. What is a web tech position and the strategy? Uh, web tech is not a new name. I hope everybody knows about it and its products and services and solution that we offer worldwide. Specifically on the heating, ventilation, and the air conditioning, uh, we are the number one worldwide supplier for the railways, specifically in the open market, on uh, many major platforms and programs. The earliest uh, endeavor that we had it in HVAC industry was in 1952. It has been 60 plus of uh, years. We have it uh, started then. Just to see the last uh, milestone, 2018, we have supplied 5,000 plus units across the world. And overall, it's, it's around 1 million uh, that we have supplied till now. What we do is here is a tailored product, customized products to uh, various uh, train operating agencies and uh, all the um, uh, metro rails and long distance train solutions. We are actually working as a global partner for providing the engineering solutions, productions, and support all across the world. We have system design capabilities across our various offices in the world. Uh, this can cater to all the comfort amenities ducts, heaters, exhaust services, heating, ventilation, air conditioning systems, and all. We offer our solutions to uh, all, all type of uh, train applications, which are very high speed, which are pretty new to India. Locomotives, EMU, DMU, MEMUs, LRVs, metros, and uh, recently uh, Metro Neo, uh, which is uh, started in India. As a responsible, you know, uh, a solution provider for uh, uh, air conditioning, we uh, do a lot, a uh, lot of uh, uh, technology excavation in uh, uh, providing green and HVAC, green HVACs with ecological and efficient. Uh, refrigerants, alternative refrigerants, also on the energy consumption and optimizations. Uh, we basically, uh, uh, at this point of time, uh, harvest on three main pillars, sustainability, air quality, and, energy, and, and the energy saving. Sustainability, uh, basically, uh, is nothing but uh, providing the solution which are long-term sus sustainable because we all know that uh, in the current scenarios uh, because of the impact on the environment there are a lot of rules and regulations which are coming in so we are providing solutions making the product which are long sustainable recently we have seen it that uh, 
COVID pandemic has taught us a lot on uh, on on hygiene and uh, making the air more uh, uh, healthier and uh, quality of the air has to be much better. So we are we have developed certain products for that. One of the product I would be uh, showing it in my uh, presentation uh, in coming slides. And same on the energy saving. Let's talk about the green edge breakfast. And which will give the uh, 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 good air quality. We call it uh, a blue filter and what it is. Basically, uh, just to talk about uh, the emphasis on uh, on the effect of, uh, uh, let's say, uh, uh, not so good or polluting environment, we have seen it that it creates a lot of uh, health hazard. Specifically, when we talk about, uh, let's say, uh, SARS, H1N1, and recently COVID-19, we have seen the effect of it. and. We have actually also seen that how uh, important it is to have a healthy environment inside it and which is not propagating and uh, risking life from one passenger to another passenger. So we have basically a solution for that. It's a basically an opportunity uh, to provide a good solution from the car operator to the passengers. So here you see uh, the blue filter which is actually a directly uh, 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 replaceable from the existing filter, which is actually eliminate up to 92% of the viruses and 83% of the bacteria. All what I'm saying is, is, is tested and uh, certified by TUV Nord as well as uh, TUV South. It's basically having uh, two variants in it. One is a standard, another is a premium. Premium will be having uh, extra carbon layer, which will be having more, uh, let's say, a better air quality delivered into the cabin. Slightly uh, costly, but there are two versions of it. We have seen it and tested it and also get it certified, as I said it before, by TUV Nord as well as South, that it captures up to 15% of the fine particle and also uh, within 15 minutes, less than 15 minutes, it eliminates 99% of the viruses, including COVID viruses, same like COVID viruses. Okay. If you just look at the structure of it, the first part would be having a electro electrostatic charge particle filtration system. Then next part is a mechanical filter, which is not the same one, but having a different layers. As I said it before, uh, all it help in uh, providing the providing the healthy air filtered air. The parts of it, if you can see it, are uh, the controlled electro discharge controls, filter element, activated layer, uh, then uh, grounding electrode and DC-DC converter. As we know that electrostatic uh, uh, filtration works on the high voltage on the DC, so we have to have a DC-DC converter also. So, uh, Let's see the see the benefits of it. Uh, the clean air filter, it immediately, at the, as we know that within, let's say, 15 minutes, uh, eliminate over 99% or let's say deactivate 99% of the bacteria. It's much better than, uh, like say, uh, UV technologies because UV technologies, uh, total cost of ownership increases uh, uh, linearly over the time because of uh, 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 the technology itself calls for the replacement of its parts, bulbs, et cetera, at a certain period of time. But here in the blue filters, nothing like, like, like that. At the same time, we have the uh, same amount of healthier air, better air. There are various other, uh, let's say, if I just start comparing uh, UV technologies, there are various other uh, 
uh, negative aspect of it uh like like you cannot have the full filtration or let's say full cleaning of uh, the air within the span uh, within the same span of ducting system or or like the hvac system because the air has to remain in uh, in the contact of the uv system for a certain period of time for killing the bacteria or the viruses or deactivating them uh, or if you wanted to on the contrary if you wanted to increase the let's say the intensity of it it become uh, it comes into uh, let's say profile where it become harmful to the systems as well as by chance if it come in contact with humans so there are so many disadvantages of uv technologies versus blue filter which is safer cleaner and then gives the same performance it's directly replacing uh, the standard filter so there is no point and there is no uh, let's say uh, a problem in implementing it uh, and uh, it's cost wise slightly higher than the standard filter but it is uh, it's a good solution it's it's a like say a uh, good bargain between the healthy uh, environment inside versus the cost so this is one of that and uh, if I just go on, uh, as I said it, I would be talking about uh, refrigerant. The, another pillar uh, which I talked about is uh, the alternative refrigerant. Let's talk about uh, first uh, uh, the world of the refrigerant. We have seen it that uh, there is a Kigali amendment which happened on the Montreal Pot Protocol. Uh, the Kigali Amendment to the Montreal Protocol is uh, basically an international agreement to gradually reduce the consumption and production of hydrofluorocarbons. It's basically a, a legally binding agreement which happened uh, across all the signing, uh, signing countries. As per the agreement, uh, these countries are expected to reduce uh, their carbon footprints, or let's say hydrofluorocarbons uh, specifically, if I talk about 80 to 85% by 2045. And by this, we expect that 0.5% uh, global warming temperature will be reducing, let's say by 2100. Okay, uh, there are basically uh, three groups in it. India comes in third group. The first group is of uh, the development, uh, developed countries where they have to reduce uh, uh, by 15% of uh, the carbon footprint of the baseline from 2012 by 2016. The second group is developing countries like China and Brazil. We basically come in the third group. In the third group, what we have to do is by uh, 2028, we have to reduce 15% of all the carbon footprint uh, by 2024-26. This is all had to be done by 2047. So these are all uh, all the information available. Uh, which uh, I'm just emphasizing here to the to uh, uh, to the amenities, uh, and if I just talk about uh, what refrigerant we have, it uh, since we started uh, refrigerant and air conditioning, I've just uh, point out my pointer. We earlier had uh, CFCs, HCFCs. We checked on to HFCs. HFCs are nothing but R134A, 407C, etc. Then industry moved to HFOs, nothing but 134, uh, uh, sorry, the R1234, YF, ZE, etc. Then to the nat natural refrigerant. Right now, the world is uh, focusing on the natu natural refrigerant development world, like the first group, which, which I mentioned, developed countries. In India, we are still at HFCs. We are right now. Uh, at uh, 134 and 407C, specifically on the railway air conditioning systems. And we are hoping to go to HFOs or uh, alternative like 513A. That's where we are. 
So uh, if I just go further, if I just try to see that what WebTech has done it so far, we are actually uh, have seen uh, CO2 systems already. We have not found them much suitable. We have found them, uh, uh, let's say, uh, uh, they, they, they cost us a lot, of course, and they are not there for all the climatic controls uh, uh, zones. Other than that is uh, R290, which is a nat natural refrigerant, okay, which is propane basically. Uh, compared to, uh, let's say, HFCs, which are, uh, let's say, having very high uh, uh, global warming potential, uh, 1430, close to 1500 compared to CO2. And we have HFOs like one two one two three four YF and ZE. The blends they are giving around four, but here R two ninety is at three, which is very close to CO two and very apt for environmental uh, friendliness. So uh, what uh, uh, it gives me, uh, 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 let's say. Uh, 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 how can I uh, say about uh, the effect of it on, uh, let's say, performance? If you have a look at uh, this picture, you can see that uh, HFCs are very close to R290. Both are almost same. So we can uh, really understand that it's uh, potential on, let's say, energy consumption as well as, uh, uh, let's say, cooling capacity or the effect on the refrigeration system is pretty same. Let's go to the next slide and see uh, uh, more on uh, the weight of the refrigeration system and dimension. Uh, if we just see uh, uh, CO2 and air, basically uh, they are pretty heavy pretty big units because uh, CO2 works on uh, very high uh, pressure as well as uh, same like here. The application of the air uh, can only be uh, like for the uh, aircraft industries uh, where the turbo machines are there for cooling the aircraft. CO2 can be used uh, only uh, uh, to the, uh, let's say, cold environment regions uh, much uh, uh, much efficiently, but when it comes to the uh, higher environment regions like India and all, it, it becomes really inefficient and then system, uh, system works on, uh, let's say, higher envelopes and then uh, gives a lot of trouble. I'm speaking about mobile air conditioning system. There, there, there have been some uh, systems developed for the industrial refrigeration and air conditioning on CO2 for India. They have they, they had some successes for uh, proving it, but not on the mobile air conditioning. Uh, if I just talk about, uh, uh, let's say, uh, one of a cost, CO2 and uh, air-based uh, solutions significantly are higher, as I said it before, but R290 doesn't uh, 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 go like that. The systems are pretty comparable to uh, HFOs. Uh, the cost, the size, the unit is pretty same. There'll be slight, it's not a one drop of solution. So if you're using HFOs uh, or HFCs right now, you cannot uh, simply uh, go on to uh, R290. You have to change something, but the retrofitment, yeah, there'll be, there'll be some retrofitment, but it is possible to produce the refrigerant uh, uh, refrigeration unit in the same uh, domain, uh, space domain as well as the cost domain. Let's talk about another aspect, uh, flammability of uh, R290. We know that uh, flammability is uh, not excluded from the refriger uh, refrigeration systems. We know already the hydrogen, uh, you know, just for example, I've just given it here, hydrogen uh, used in the fuel cell, hydrogen being uh, highly flammable. Next is lithium iron uh, batteries, which are also flammable in nature, but they are used widely. 
there are uh, hydrocarbons also we saw. We, we know that. So well, the, the point is here is that uh, there are flammable substances, but when uh, there are ways and methods to use them and incorporate them into uh, the equipments in a safe way. R290, especially, uh, we have developed the system. Uh, we have identified the risks in the life cycle for, uh, let's say, in service operations, standstill, maintenance, repair, as well as in case of the accident also, and force forcible misuses. So we have identified all the risks, we have mitigated all the risk, we have done all the risk evaluation uh, with uh, uh, TUV Nord, TUV South, and also we have done uh, the evaluation of the risk uh, with the Federal Institute of Material as well as federal authorities in Germany. They've all cleared it. And as a result, uh, we have developed one unit and that unit is uh, placed it on Deutsche Bahn, uh, one of the train which is running since July 2020. We are gathering uh, the details and data on it so far is is pretty good and proving so in nutshell uh, webtech has a solution r290 uh, as a natural refrigerant which is uh, having a very low global warming potential which is very good on environment as well as not uh, 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 let's say uh, uh, problematic from flammability point of view operation point of view and it's proven. So uh, that's uh, that's one part on uh, R290. Another part is uh, on uh, energy saving. Uh, here, uh, let me uh, give a little detail that HVAC, as we already know, that HVAC consumes approximately 20 to 40% of the energy next to uh, traction basically so having uh, seen this much of the energy consumption from the hvac it is required that we are equally uh, uh, apt on energy saving as well one part of the uh, energy consumption that happens from this is to uh, control the the temperature uh, and uh, the heat ingress that comes from the uh, from the fresh air. We know that the fresh air is needed inside uh, uh, the saloon or the car, uh, which has to be kept within a specified limit for the passenger's health and safety. Now to keep it uh, that much uh, precise level, there are various controls on it. The current control is a load-based control. In that control, we basically operate uh, the damper that you see it over here based on the load system. So if you have uh, more passengers, the damper opens up more, more fresh air is driven in, and the levels of the CO2 is maintained. On the contrary, when there are less people, the damper closes. This is the current control. What are the problem with the current control is that the, in, the steps in which this operates is pretty large. They are operating in 0, 25%, 50%, 75%, and 100%. And uh, as well as when, when the train comes to the station, or let's say metro train comes to the station, that time a lot of fresh air comes in. There is no much change in, let's say, uh, the passenger load, but still there are a lot of fresh air comes in. Despite that, this damper, damper is kept in full open condition. It brings in a lot of air from outside. And then CO2 level basically decreases drastically, much lesser than the specified maximum specified limit. The specified limit is, you know, uh, approximately, let's say, 2,500 to 2,600 uh, parts per million. It reduces, uh, reduces drastically. So in that case, uh, what is needed here is a different control mechanism for this damper to get controlled. 
what we have done it is that we have set a, a CO2 sensor in HVAC. The app place for putting a CO2 sensor was the return air area, where the return air is actually the best representation of the CO2 level inside the saloon. Based on the reading from uh, the CO2 uh, level, we have a designated uh, algorithm, which is customizable to every train, every car, as well as uh, every uh, operating condition and uh, every climatic zone. That software controls uh, opening and closing of the damper precisely. And uh, response system of this is pretty high. So when we control the fresh air uh, precisely uh, to the accurate level of uh, let's say uh, CO2 level uh, inside the car, we basically save on the energy. We basically save on the heat uh, which is coming in from outside as, as uh, through the uh, fresh air. And we gain the benefits out of it. We have seen it uh, that approximately uh, 10 to 30 percent saving can be there, which is depending on several conditions. Basically, the environment, the load, let's say the design of the car, uh, uh, the insulation system of the car, the train running time, uh, hour, season. There are a lot of parameters in it, but on an average, uh, 10 to 30 percent you can save. On one instance of uh, our testing, we have seen it. If you can see this, uh, a different condition, 44 degrees Celsius, 33% relative humidity, ambient condition. And when the car was set at 27 degrees Celsius, we have saved 15.6. And correspondingly, uh, other values, uh, 15 to 18%. That was a specific case that where we have implemented in India in one of the metro and then seen the benefit out of it. So this is uh, basically the CO2 sensor, uh, which is uh, uh, which is designed by us, and it can be placed inside the return air opening, as you can see it on the picture, and it is uh, operated with the controller, 24 volt DC controller, which is very well available, not a problem. So with this, basically we can achieve 10 to 20, 15, 30% uh, saving, which is, uh, which, which, which can be, uh, you know, customized based on the application. So uh, that's pretty it. Uh, three major topic, I just wanted to present it to you. Uh, three technology uh, endeavors that we had done it so far. The one that I presented in the last CO2 control system is pretty uh, implementable in India right now. Uh, the other uh, R290 uh, refrigerant system uh, is, 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 is uh, let's say, so far being running in Europe, very well available for India, depending on the uh, availability, its usefulness uh, on various, uh, uh, you know, feasibility type and uh, maintainability and all all the aspect we can we can introduce it to the Indian Indian market. The other one, uh, blue filter, is also very well available. Uh, this is also, uh, you know, applicable to the Indian market. I hope I have. Uh, uh, you know, intricated little uh, uh, anxiety in all of uh, the viewers. Uh, I'll be uh, available for the question and answer in the uh, in the live session. Uh, looking for you to uh, to take your questions and answer that. Uh, thank you all.